What's up guys, CP Moddy here back with another video and today we're here with our monthly PC build plan. Now this month we're actually changing things up quite a bit and a lot of people out there have actually requested me to take a look at the used PC market. Now a lot of the time I really don't like looking in the used PC market because it is constantly changing. However, enough people have asked over sort of the year or so I've been doing these videos so I thought why not finally switch it up and actually take a look at the used market as a lot of people have been telling me to take a look at it and see what I can actually pull out and see what kind of a build that I can put together. Now again, before we do jump into this, once again, I do want to make it super clear that yes, the used market is always changing. The prices and deals that I get today, I'm very sure will be different by the time you watch this video and have a look for yourself. So use this as, I guess, a general rule of thumb, but I guarantee you, whether you're looking at the power supply prices or the video card prices, by the time you watch this video and have a look for your own deals, you're going to be getting yourself super different deals. And if you find yourself a wicked deal, let me know down in that comment section if you picked up a part for a really good price. Anyway, with that being said, I did go ahead and set some guidelines for today's build. First and foremost, they had to be used parts. I couldn't buy a new condition or a refurbished condition part. It needed to be used from someone on eBay. And I guess the second part would also to be we're mainly focusing on eBay. There's other sites such as Gumtree or if you're in the United States, Craigslist as Gumtree is like the Australian version of Craigslist. Either way, there are other sites that allow you to buy and sell stuff like that. But today, to keep things simple, we are mainly just sticking on eBay and also to shipping had to be either free or no more than $20 otherwise you might as well just go ahead and buy a new part you get warranty and all those other good things that come with new things so maximum shipping price of $20 or we could go down the road and pick it up now with that being said I did find some awesome deals for like parts that were say $50 but then the shipping was $150 again we really didn't go with that we tried to keep shipping realistic and something that you might actually be buying for your new system but with that being said, let's kick things off with the CPU. And kicking off our dodgy PC adventure, we grabbed ourselves the Intel Core i5 6600. Now, whilst the sixth generation is now, I guess, two generations old with the latest Coffee Lake coming out, this Core i5 is still quad core with four threads and comes in with a respectable overclocking set of numbers. And not to mention the 6600K just a few years ago was still a very high end top dog CPU. Sure, with that being said, there are things like Ryzen and now Coffee Lake coming out with many more cores and all those kind of good things. Things, but for the sake of today's video, we're still going to be able to get some really good overclocks and play some games. And let's face it, a lot of our games out there are still only taking advantage of maybe two or three, maybe even four cores. So our quad core here will be fine for gaming. But if you are looking into content creation, streaming, or doing a ton of multitasking, you may be held back a little bit. But again, for a gaming rig, which is what we're doing here today, it is definitely still fine here. Sure, we could have dropped as much as we would pay for a brand new 8600K and just got ourselves an 8 6600k but we are trying to keep things a little bit budget but still going up in that higher end market so we did go ahead with the 6600k and coming at 240 Australian dollars and it doesn't even have shipping attached to it it wasn't a too bad deal now 240 dollars may seem pretty steep if you are over in the states and it's still pretty steep by Australian standards but seeing that it came out for a lot more than that uh, we are getting an okay deal moving on to the motherboard section this was probably one of the most dodgiest things that I picked up or at least found online and this guy is the Gigabyte Z170 HD3. Now the HD3 motherboard is actually a really nice motherboard. I built with it back in the day and it is still a really good performer. In fact, I think I might have one downstairs still. I can't exactly remember which motherboard, but it is a very similar one there. The reason why I mention it's dodgy is because the seller didn't actually include any pictures of the actual motherboard itself. It's just a picture of the box and then a stock image. So that's a little bit on the concerning side. So for all we may know, we may just pay $130 for a lump of potatoes and we may not actually get anything worth it. But we did pay only $130, so we can't exactly complain too much because sort of the closest Z170 board I could find was around the $200 Australian dollar price point at the time of recording. So for about $130, we did get ourselves a Z170 board. And with some overclocking action and four DDR4 RAM dims, we should get ourselves all the expansion we need for this particular system we want to put together. Now, RAM-wise, this was definitely a tough one as we are in a global 
global RAM shortage and really any kind of storage shortage, a lot of people are taking advantage of the current situation, selling off half of their RAM, which is I'm pretty sure what this seller is doing, and then just continuing on with half of their RAM, but they've just got themselves exactly the same amount they paid originally back by selling half their RAM. Now this particular RAM that we are looking at today is a single stick of 16 gigabytes by Gel Evo X. I've never used this part in person, I've never even seen one in a system, but I know they're out there. I've seen them at the PC store actually, but really never seen them around. We picked ours up for $199. Now this particular stick is actually part of a 32 gigabyte kit, giving us the ease of expansion up to 32 gigabytes in the future. Now this particular kit retails for $557 Australian dollars at a brand new part range. So we are getting a fairly good deal that we're getting half of that kit for less than half of the price. So that's pretty good. But at the same time, $199 used for RAM is really something that I'm personally not a big fan of. Again, for $199 a couple years ago, I actually bought 32 gigs worth of RAM and I really wish I bought a whole lot more now because then I could have sold them for a whole lot more than they actually worth. Now, video card wise, this was also to another bit of a problem. As we are in the mining situation right now, video cards are kind of expensive. I really wanted to go with something from the 10 series and pick one up slightly used, maybe off of a miner who's decided to cash out, but all the people who were doing mining were selling them in batches. I was like looking through eBay and there's like, you know, 6, 12, I've seen 24 video cards in the system being sold off as is and none of them wanted to break them out and just sell them one at a time. So we did have to go down to the 900 series of video cards, which still offers us good performance and usually speaking has a slightly lower price tag and that is definitely good for us. And for that we picked ourselves up a GTX 980 video card and for some reason this unit has been pulled out of an Area 51 desktop and also too is being displayed by a rabbit upside down. I don't know why the seller did that, but anyway, I guess, okay. With the rabbit actually shocking the video card, so that's kind of a little bit weird. Despite the fact that full length video cards can actually sit upright by themselves without any kind of stand or anything like that, so yeah. But in all fairness to the seller, those cards are definitely gonna be fine. A rabbit isn't really gonna be shocking the heck out of a video card, so they should be totally fine there. And also too, just a message to the seller, if you are planning on selling these cards with these little uh, tabs on them, I'd recommend taking them off because you are running a pre-built and usually those tabs are pretty important for your next video card. So so if you're going to be doing that, keep them. Otherwise, we did pick our up for $400 right there, which is really not the greatest for such an old video card, but at the same time, seeing that they retailed for well over $1,000 here in Australia back in the day, I'm not too upset there. And sure, it's no fancy 980 Ti or even a 1080, but for most games at 1080p, it's definitely gonna be able to push them out in high settings. So it's gonna be awesome for our little used system right here. Now, storage-wise, I snagged a WD Green 2 terabyte drive for $89.90, and also too, I went ahead and picked up a Samsung 256 gigabyte M.2 drive for just $60. Now, honestly, I really don't recommend going ahead and buying storage use, mainly because storage generally has a finite amount of time that it's good, then it goes to not so reliable, then it's dead. So generally when you're buying new stuff, you're kind of in that not so reliable stage, generally speaking. So usually I just recommend going new, but for the sake of keeping things as a used storage drive, well, we picked up some used storage drives. Now rounding out this build, we also do picked up a power supply. When I was shopping for power supplies, I'm surprised just how expensive they are. However, with that being said, I managed to track down a Corsair RM1000 for just $120. These guys today go for a lot more than $120. When I saw that, I almost actually bought it for myself, not necessarily for this video, but uh, I ended up not actually getting the deal. Either way, I did pick it up. It unfortunately doesn't come with any cables, but I did find a seller for $14 selling off a whole bunch of cables. And that RM1000 is definitely super overkill for this kind of a build. However, it does give us a ton of headroom for going going ahead and actually doing things like SLI setups because 980s are going to be going down in price. You could throw two, maybe three or even four as this generation still supports multi-video cards unlike today. So you could be taking advantage of a lot more video cards or you could just keep it around for a lot of builds as an RM1000 is a really bulletproof power supply. Sure, some have gone bad and I've seen them gone bad on the internet, but compared to a lot of other power supplies, the RM series is still relatively reliable. And again, for $120, it isn't too bad. Maybe a little bit 
up, but still at the same time, $120 for 1000 watts, definitely not too bad. And yes, for those people who are going to be commenting, yes, it's overkill, but for $120, I was looking in that five to 600 uh, watt range, whereas we got a thousand watt run. So definitely not a bad deal there. In terms of the actual cooler itself, the CPU we picked up surprisingly actually ships with the CPU cooler, but I did want to do some overclocking and a stock cooler is nothing in comparison to an aftermarket one. So we picked ourselves up the Noctua NHU14S CPU cooler, which is a nice little small and relatively compact cooler. Yes, it is still a full tower height, but it is still pretty nice there. And also too, in terms of thermal paste, because it doesn't really come with any, I paid a freaking $12 for the rest of someone's thermal paste of the Noctua NTH1. Now, the NTH1 won out our thermal paste test in that video, so it is still a pretty good paste there, but $12 for the rest of this guy's tube isn't really something I personally would be wanting to go ahead and buy. Probably something you want to pick up new so you have the entire tube. Now, the case was where we ran into another problem. All the gaming or gaming kind of cases all weren't really on eBay or had massive shipping attached to them. I remember I found a ton of cases that were really good for this build, came in at a decent price, but had like $200 shipping attached to it. So this is where something like Gumtree or Craigslist would come into play where you could actually get some local cases from your area and usually they'd be pretty good and come with free shipping so you can just go down to that person's place and get it. The only real problem is you may get stabbed in doing so, but if you manage to avoid getting stabbed, you may also to get a really decent case. But for this particular build, we grabbed ourselves the Antec 300 tower, which is a good enough tower, comes with decent, or it comes with rather decent airflow. It is a little bit more on the kind of plain Jane side with sort of a very plain interior, nothing too fancy there, but it does have a nice mesh front, meaning we will get decent air intake. And also to just to cap it off, it did come with an Asus DVD drive. So I guess that was a bit of a plus. Now, again, if you are looking for use cases, once again, Craigslist, Gumtree and those kind of places are gonna be better as they do deliver kind of local source parts. And unfortunately, I couldn't really find too many used PC cases on eBay at the time of recording. So do keep in mind, maybe different times of the year you'll find different cases, but either way, that is that. And finally, to cap things off, we grabbed ourselves a copy of Windows from Kingwin, keeping in the spirit of keeping things nice and cheap, for our final total build cost of $1,368.50. Cents. And just taking a look at that price tag, damn, that's kind of high for a system like this. Now, with that being said, it isn't a too bad system. With a decently spec Core i5 that could easily overclock with the parts that we did also to put in, 16 gigs of RAM, which is plenty for a lot of games out there, and also to a 980, which should be able to smash out games at 1080p high settings, no problems. And again, even though the sixth generation is a little bit old at this point, people are still rocking third gen parts able to smash out high FPS. So honestly, I personally wouldn't be too worried about running that sixth generation part. But the question is, would I personally build it? Absolutely not. This is the kind of system that you're paying $1,300 for, and I honestly would not be paying $1,300 for a system that doesn't even come with warranty and might be broken in shipping, as let's face it, a lot of people out there who are shipping computer parts aren't exactly the world's best shipping departments. Unfortunately, I've had my fair share of broken parts and DOA stuff, so... You do, you do run that risk, and not to mention, again, there is no warranty. So if something goes wrong down the line, say in five, six months time, you're gonna be completely out of luck and now gonna have to buy new parts because, well, they're really not going there. Sure, buying individual parts is definitely a great way to save some money and you could buy yourself some used fans and get yourself some nice fans there. You could buy yourself a new video card, rather a new used video card, but at the end of the day, dropping $1,300 on completely used parts is something that I personally would really not want to go ahead and do. Now, if you were on a super tight budget, if you were looking at under $1,000, I might be a little bit more inclined to do this, but building out a full high-end spec system for $1,300 on used parts is really something I don't want to do. However, at the same time, buying a super high-end system like this system would be brand new probably would be costing more than $1,300. But with that being said, stay tuned to next month's PC build as we'll actually be matching that same price but building something brand new. And I guess we'll do a showdown to see which one would be better. But let me know down in that comment section, what do you think of buying used parts? Again, personally, I really don't have a problem with buying individual parts, doing some 
minor upgrades with some used components. I think that's a really great way to save some money and also to get some cool parts. But at the same time, building a full system for $1,300 with new parts isn't really something I personally want to be doing. If you want to check out some of these parts, I'll leave them linked down in that description box. However, with that being said, they won't be the eBay listings. These will be brand new listings because by the time this video comes out, they're going to be all sold just about. So there's kind of a little bit of a problem there with actually linking used parts. So again, if you want to check out any of these parts that we did talk about, link down below. Once again, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you